Good evening, I'm Alexandria Clow. And I'm Ryan Christ. The director of the Center for Collaborative Conservation at Colorado State University's Warner College of Natural Resources, Robin Reed, is speaking at the Lori Student Center. Tonight, Reed will be fe a, featured student, a featured speaker for the President's Community Lecture Series, hosted by President Tony Frank. The presentation showcases extraordinary faculty at CSU that are public and free for the community. Tonight's presentation will focus on creating resolutions for conservation issues by assembling businesses, government, citizens, and scientists. Jabs were thrown last night as Trump and Clinton battled it out at the debate. Reporter Emily Biffinger hit the plaza to see how CSU students feel about the election. Here at CSU as college students, this is our first election and voting is super important. The Donald Trump campaign has created a movement across the earth, or across uh, the whole country. He's gotten more votes than any Republican primary nominee in history during his primary. So that should tell you something about the excitement and the movement that he's created. And let me tell you, the kids on campus, they're just as excited as everyone else. For college students, I think the thing I'm most excited about with Hillary is her college affordability plan. Um, Hillary's proposed a plan where any family who makes less than $125,000 a year is going to get a tuition-free college. Um, I think uh, if you do it out, it's 82, 84% of students here in Colorado would go to college tuition-free. Hillary, just, well, she's in. She's just in for the money. Donald Trump is actually in it for the people. As a minority, I feel that uh, Donald Trump wouldn't, does not have my best interests at heart. And I have a lot of friends who are also minorities, and it just doesn't, isn't a safe feeling environment if he would ever be elected. As you can see here at CSU, the votes are pretty torn. Others uh, sway one way. Some people actually aren't informed. I'm not going to be voting just because I really don't feel like I should be casting my vote to, for someone that I really don't have an opinion towards, and that's just kind of across the board for all the candidates. So it would probably be Gary Johnson. Awesome. And what will Johnson bring to the table that neither of the other candidates can? Um, he has a good system of voting and he doesn't backtrack on his votes like you see Trump and Clinton uh, when they voted before the next term they've actually gone against what they voted for the previous especially Clinton um, and Gary Johnson has a pretty good track record of staying consistent with his votes. Uh, I actually don't support either one so I'm still looking at the pros and cons of both and or you know go for the independent vote that's kind of somewhere in the middle. You know go research before you vote make sure that you really know what this campaign is about, the issues, and what's going to be the process of the president once they're elected. Because this, this election isn't just the next four years. In the words of Mike Pence, it's the next 40. If you haven't registered to vote yet, you can visit www.govotecolorado.com. A total of 23 Colorado State University alumni will be honored at the CSU Alumni Association Distinguished Alum Alumni Awards. The awards recognize CSU alumni each year who have distinguished themselves professionally, brought honor to this to the university, and have made significant con con contributions of time to the university or their community. A ceremony will be held in the Lori Student Center Ballroom following a dinner for the honorees on October 6th at 5.30 in the evening in honor of the recipients. Around 20 students organized a demonstration to spread the message, stop the violence, around 11 in the morning on Monday on the plaza. The demonstration was partially in response to the shooting in Charlotte, North Carolina last week, but students said it was an overall response to the police brutality violence around the nation over the past year. Students brought handouts in support of the Black Lives Matter movement and handed out black ribbons. They had a table with resources for those interested. Members of the local group held a larger cutoff, cutout of a black ribbon on the plaza. They said their main purpose was to educate bypassers about stopping violence and police brutality in America. If you thought about driving to school this year, you might have been surprised by the permit price. CTV reporter Willis Scott found out why the permits cost what they do. Prices for student commuter parking permits have risen $113 from last year. Ryan Grub is in charge of finance and administration for parking and transportation services. He says the new prices are modeled after prices at other universities similar in size to CSU. To build a surface lot, um, it costs an average of $5,000 per space. As soon as you start to build structures like this one in the new uh, South College garage that we built, that figure goes 
up to twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars a space. So we established a set of peers, and we went out and looked at what their they charge their employees and students. And for commuter students, we're right in line with it. With the with the increase, it brings us pretty close to in line. With the parking permit price increase, not all students are pleased with the current parking situation. Some students have chosen not to purchase a permit this semester because the price is just too high. Honestly, I think it's pretty stupid. CSU is already taking so much of our money and to increase prices of parking, um, but then decrease the amount of like spaces that there are to park makes no sense to me. One thing everyone agrees on, the prices aren't likely to go back down. The, the more construction that happens on campus, the more lots, the more spaces we lose. Um, if we need to recoup those, we will need to build more, which will cost more, and that just flows back into that top line where we need more revenue to fill our expenses. I mean, they've increased like the prices of the parking meters on campus. I think CSU is going to always like find a way to get you know an extra penny out of people. Uh, it's definitely going to go up. There's no doubt. Um, but you know, I got to embrace the change. You know. While parking and transportation services has sold 300 fewer student permits than last year, the re revenue from student permits has increased more than $100,000 this fiscal year. The Student Fee Review Board toured Colorado State's University New Health and Medical Center located on the corner of Lake Street and College Avenue on Monday. The Student Fee Reviewed Broad Board is a group of student representatives who oversee $55 million in student fees. Some members of the Associated Students of Colorado State University serve on the board. The building is a $59 million project funded by student fees, private donations, and self-generated revenue from the CSU Health Network. The new health center will provide full medical and mental health services to students under one building consisting of four floors. Three will be dedicated to students and fac faculty. Coming up, we have the Full weather forecast from Elizabeth Prossy. And later we have sports and entertainment. Tune in to KCSU, your student-run radio station at Colorado State University. Live 24 hours a day, every day at 90.5 FM and kcsufm.com. Live local new music now and news, talk, and sports. KCSU, the radio voice of Colorado State on the air since 1964. You're watching CTV, produced by Colorado State University students, bringing you news, weather, sports, and entertainment from campus and beyond. CTV live Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. on campus and Fort Collins on Channel 11. Repeats at midnight, 8 a.m., noon, and 2 p.m. The Rocky Mountain Collegian is your student-run news and information platform. Pick up your paper on campus or around Fort Collins Monday through Thursday with special editions Fridays. And check out collegian.com anytime for all the latest updates. News, sports, entertainment, opinion, and more. The Rocky Mountain Collegian, serving Colorado State since 1891. College Avenue has been your student magazine for the last 10 years. College Avenue prints once a month covering topics that are relevant to the CSU and Fort Collins community. We also print special editions like the graduation guides at the end of each semester, the best of CSU each fall, and the orientation guide each summer. Look for us on racks around campus, off campus, or online at collegian.com under the College Avenue tab. Hello, weather anchor Elizabeth Prossy here on this Tuesday evening. As we approach the end of September, let's compare this transition from summer into fall. August, we saw a high of 99 degrees and 19 days of the 31 were spent above the average of 86 degrees. September, we're seeing a high of 91 degrees, 15 days so far spent above the average of 76 degrees. So very warm here in Fort Collins. Currently in Fort Collins, we're looking at temperatures at 70 degrees. Do have that gentle breeze coming out of the southwest as the sun is just starting to set. Mostly clear night though for you. If you're headed out to Sundance this evening, going to be pleasant at 9 o'clock, 67. Cooling down to just below 60 degrees. Going to be a great chance to get those cowboy boots on and practice your boot scoot and boogie, maybe even a little two-step there. For the entire state of Colorado, we're seeing temperatures get near that freezing mark, which means frost advisories for Gunnison and Alamosa. Along the I-25 corridor, warmer in those upper 40s, even seen some 50s in Pueblo and in Denver. On the eastern plains, 43 degrees tomorrow, 48 degrees in Burlington. 
for your Wednesday. Make sure to grab those sunglasses. The sun will be out tomorrow. And the shorts, the weather will be nice and warm. Still going to be shorts weather here in Fort Collins. 61 degrees as you start your day. Lots of sunshine for your lunch. Maybe take the lunch outside. But then by 5 o'clock, make sure you get outside. Go grab the football. Throw the frisbee around. Just get outside and really enjoy these upper 70s and just very pleasant weather that we have here at the end of September. Across the state, you can see that average of 76. Lots of cities will be above the average. Fort Collins, 80, 81 in Denver. We've got a little bit warmer in Pueblo, 85, and like 85 degrees tomorrow. Cooler though as we head towards the mountain, Grand Junction, you're still looking at 80 degrees for your Wednesday. We have the Border War this Saturday night at Hughes Stadium. Going to be a late night game though. Kickoff is not until 8.15. We're going to see partly cloudy skies, temperatures cool, 63, and then cooling down even more by fourth quarter, so around 11 o'clock-ish. We're going to be in those mid-50s, so you won't want to bring a jacket to the game. It will be a cool and clear game, and overall, going to be very exciting as Wyoming plays the Colorado State Rams. But before we go, I have a very special birthday shout-out I like to give to my one and only brother. I'm forecasting lots of birthday cake and ice cream and maybe even a moped, depending on what mom and dad say for your birthday. So happy birthday, David. Don't go anywhere. We've got more in the world of Ram Sports coming up right after this. Good evening, I'm Haley Evans with your latest update on CSU Sports. The Colorado State football team ended its two-game winning streak after Saturday's game in Minnesota. The Rams competed against Big Ten opponent, the Minnesota Golden Gophers, which resulted in a 31-24 loss. Michael Gallup was a huge component for the Rams against the Gophers. Gallup had 53 receiving yards after having six receptions thrown to him by freshman quarterback Colin Hill. However, CSU's offense wasn't enough to bring home a win. The Rams struggled defensively with only two returning starters from last year's season's team. They couldn't take down Minnesota's running backs Rodney Smith and Shannon Brooks. Minnesota quarterback Mitch Leidner ran the ball all over the Rams' defense, appearing unstoppable as well. Up next, annual Border War marks the start of Colorado State's conference play this Saturday. CSU takes on the University of Wyoming for the 107th year in a row. Kickoff time against the Cowboys is scheduled for 8:15 Saturday night at Hughes Stadium. The Rams had their 21st consecutive win in the Mountain West Conference play this Saturday against after sweeping San Jose State. As a team, CSU hit over 350 combining all three sets. In the final set, the Rams had 17 kills on 30 attempts with only one error. Starting freshman Alex Oletic received the honor of the Mountain West Offense Player of the Week. Freshman, this freshman Ram has not won the award since 2008. After the sweep, Rams now have several players ranked in the Mountain West Conference. Katie Oleksik leads the Mountain West Conference in assists and is ranked 7th nationally. And Alexandra Paletto leads the conference in blocks. Colorado State's next game will be set in Logan, Utah against Utah State at 7 in the evening. The women's soccer team had a rough start in conference play this past weekend as it lost 2-1 in overtime to Boise State on Sunday, making it their second loss in conference. Paige Brandt was a star of the Rams despite the loss, blocking eight attempted shots. Amy Eckert made school history for breaking the, most, for breaking the record of most games played in a career at 58 games. Women's soccer's next game is against the University of Nevada on Friday 
for right here in Fort Collins. Football wasn't the only team competing in Minnesota this weekend. CSU's men's and women's cross-country team competed at the 31st annual Roy Griak Invitational. Gerald Marks started his junior year with a, with a memorable debut by winning the men's 8K run. This is the second year in a row that the Rams have taken the first place but at the Roy Griak Invitational. Last year, the title belonged to Jefferson Abbey, who was placed 91st on the year. Who placed 91st this year? Mock ran against 263 other athletes. Seven of the men's runners finished in the top 100, with many others being close to breaking in the top. The women's team had three of their, of their runners placed in the top 100, with the fastest being Allie Kellner, who placed 50th overall. Cross Country's next meet is set in Seattle, Washington on Friday. That's all we have for sports, but coming up next is Nicole Hines, and she has the latest in the world of entertainment. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. Sure, I look cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. Oh, hey there, Rams. I'm Nicole Hines, a.k.a. your entertainment anchor, and I have your daily dose of random entertainment facts. Today, the show Sabrina the Teenage Witch turns 20 years old. Scary, but entertaining, right? Well, if the broom fits, fly it. Selena Gomez has checked herself into rehab due to emotional issues. A new report states the 24-year-old singer is going to extraordinary lengths to get her life back together. After revealing her struggles with anxiety, depression, and panic attacks last month, it is said that her problems all started because of her lupus diagnosis and depression. Gomez's rehab of choice has not been disclosed yet, but it is a woman's fa facility that is in a secluded wooded area where she has no celebrity ties. She will be staying at this location for more than 60 days. Now, Gomez is taking a break from social media and has not posted an Instagram picture since she posted saying she was canceling her revival tour last month. But her fans wanted to find a way to make her feel better. With everything she has been going through, the fans created the hashtag Selena Break the Internet to get her Instagram followers to 100 million. Selenators did just that and made Gomez's Instagram the first ever profile to hit that follower mark. This, is, this new record puts her above Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Ariana Grande, and Kim Kardashian West. Needless to say, Selena, we all hope you get better and, f and get the help you need. If you have been keeping up with CTV this semester, then you know that I went to the Olympics at the end of the summer. Well, some of my four-legged friends decided to test their luck in the competition. I'm here at the Doggy Olympics where dogs get to show off their skills they learned while chasing squirrels. On your bark, get set, let's go check it out. The Larimer Animal People Partnership is celebrating its 21st year with more than 300 people making their way to City Park. And it started out as an event to um, bring people in the community out to have positive interactions with their pets. And so we have different games and then booths so that people could find out about different vets in the area, dog training, that you could actually train your dog in a gentle way and that and this is just a way to encourage people to get out and get outside and have a fun time with their animals. Members of Phi Gamma Delta and the Pre-Vet Club volunteered their time and spent the day with dogs of all kinds. Talented pups competed in various events like frisbee. 
tidbit catch, water retrieval, and an obstacle course where judges gave them points. These performance points gave them the chance to get gold, silver, or bronze medals, all based on assorted skill levels. They have three different levels, I believe, so you can come and just do it for fun. Uh, so I highly suggest that for anybody because it's just it's just fun to get your dog to try and do the obstacle course or you know stuff they've never done before, uh, and they welcome that here. So cool. the doggy Olympics ended on a whole new level. <laughs> Mine just stand on my feet when my feet are here. I know I had a great weekend playing with puppies, and the dogs looked like they had a doggone good time. Even though my weekend was pretty fun, I wish I had made a trip out to New York City. This weekend, a couple that was getting married in Central Park got a nice surprise and their photographer, Meg Miller, got it all on camera. Tom Hanks was walking through the park when he spotted the couple and decided to crash their wedding. Luckily, the photographer pulled out her camera just in time to capture the moment. She later posted the photos she took on Instagram saying, yesterday's wedding was so beautiful. Elizabeth and Ryan, you planned one amazing celebration. The icing on the cake was Tom Hanks stopping in Central Park to wish them congratulations. The bride's face says it all. She must have been a big Tom Hanks fan. What a way to spend your wedding day. Tom Hanks also took a selfie with the couple on his phone and posted that picture to his Instagram page, captioning it, Elizabeth and Ryan, congrats and blessings, Hanks. They all look so happy. And I mean, who wouldn't be? The couple just got married and Tom Hanks got to make their day even better. If I were part of the family, I'd be so jealous. Who am I kidding? I am jealous and I don't even know them. Anyway, the newlyweds family now has to step up their game for the next wedding they have. I'm not sure how they're going to top this, but they are sure going to have to try. If you have not gotten enough of a dog fix during this segment, no need to worry. Tomorrow starting at 7 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon, the dog parlor here in Fort Collins is throwing a ball pit day. They're going to let dogs play in a huge ball pit they made at the location. If you take your dog to this event, they will be in doggy heaven. Make sure to call and make reservations because spots will fill up quickly and if you're not able to make it out to this event they have reoccurring events like this going on all the time that's all the time we have for you tonight make sure to turn to catch tomorrow's brand new cooking show at seven for more news sports and entertainment make sure to head over to the have a great night rams